Yeah. Messed up. Yeah. 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 Maybe the girls will be trying. Oh, he can't this. Now we're going to do it. Hey, Is the... I actually... I was happy that I was joking. I was like, jet lag. I thought it was. Yeah. Could you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, uh, we just ask for your presence here tonight as, uh, and be with us as we in our thoughts and help us make uh, the very important decisions that we make that affect our students and our staff. In your most heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, call to order um, Eastern Green School Board meeting on March 20th, 2023 at 7.01 p.m. Let's see. You want to go ahead? Students of the month. Yeah, let's go ahead and, yeah, we can do the students of the month. Yeah. Do you want to start elementary? Yeah, I'll screw up. This is Lily Holtzman. Oh, you're <laughs> yeah. Moral support. Yep. And Lily is a kindergartner in Mrs. Deckard's class, and Mrs. Deckard wrote that Lily comes in every day with a smile and a positive attitude. She's always looking to do her very best in her work and in her choices. She is helpful and kind and sets a great example for all of her classmates. Lily has a huge heart and works so very hard at all of her schoolwork. I'm so proud of her and so grateful to have had her in my cl kindergarten class this year. I know that she is going to do great things. Lily Holstrom. And Mr. Nash is a kindergartner in Mrs. Needler's class. And Mrs. Needler wrote that Nash is an absolute model student. He came into kindergarten acting as if he had been in school for many years. He is polite, takes turns, helps others, and is a great role model for his peers. Nash has a kind heart and goes out of his way to make others feel special and loved. He writes letters to people he thinks don't get enough recognition, cards for people who have helped him or who have been sick, and pictures for friends and teachers just to brighten their day. I could go on and on about all of the great things that Nash does in class, but I will wrap it up by saying that I am so extremely proud of him, and having him in my class this year has been an absolute blessing. Jackson, you want to go on? I don't know if you have that to your back. I haven't done this in here before, so this is new. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm spoiled with the podium. No, yet. come back over. You can't, you're off the camera. camera. <laughs> do we face you? Uh, you can face whoever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we're going to do it, man. All right. So Mrs. Campbell wrote this. She said, Jax not only has been putting in hard work at school, but in tutoring as well. He shows integrity daily by doing the right thing and helping others. 
He manages to balance being a student athlete during basketball season, meanwhile doing this all with a smile on his face. In addition to demonstrating kindness in the classroom daily, he also worked with Mrs. Kimmel and the Kindness Club to spread joy to students and staff throughout the school. And also, Mrs. Alt wrote this. It's a lot. <laughs> Jax is a remarkable young man and it is a complete pleasure to have him in class. Every single day he comes to class with a smile on his face and his mind ready to learn. From day one I could tell that he was a worker. Math doesn't always come easy for this young man. It didn't me either. But that doesn't stop him. He's not afraid to ask questions or come to my desk and ask for help. That's sometimes hard for sixth graders to do and I'm proud that he's not afraid to do what he needs to do to learn and succeed. Not only is he a good student, but he has to be one of the kindest students I've ever had. He's pleasant to his classmates, follows the rules and procedures, and is a wonderful role model to his peers. I honestly wish that we had a whole school filled with kids like him because it would make our community better than it already is. If I could keep him for another year, I would definitely do that, but I'm sure that the seventh grade teachers are anxious to have him. I will miss him when he moves on. Congratulations, buddy. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Mrs. Campbell wrote this. Catherine is a hard worker that always has her work done. She is a sweet and outstanding person. She often has a smile on her face and brings joy to others. In addition to demonstrating kindness in the classroom daily, she also worked with Mrs. Kimmel and the Kindness Club to spread joy to students and staff throughout the school. All right. Also, I have this from Mr. Cole. He calls you Cat. Yeah. Either? Okay. Catherine, Kat is an excellent student. She's extremely kind and hardworking. I have personally seen her go out of her way to help others. She was involved in the Kindness Club and there couldn't have been a better student selected. Kat is a shining example in our school for how a student should act. Just as I am writing this about her Wednesday the 8th, I witnessed her kindness firsthand when a student left a backpack behind and Catherine offered to return it without being asked. Recently, I've also had the opportunity to work with her as a coach for track and field. She has demonstrated incredible resilience in a very physically and mentally demanding sport. As it relates to kindness, she is always the first to lend a helping hand to a team member who is struggling with a drill or exercise. In one particular case, she and another student were struggling in a core exercise, and Catherine offered to lock arms together and talk to her friend as a way to take their mind off the physically demanding drill. Because of her kindness, grades, and attitude, she will be joining my team for what I have to understand is her first school sport ever. Good job. This is quite the achievement considering the amount of sign-ups and participants we have had this year. Overall, Catherine is a wonderful and model example and is marvelous choice for student of the month. Congratulations. <laughs> First, uh, from the high school, Braden Myers. Where you at, Braden? <laughs> now I get to read about you. Thank so you. your teachers say this about you. You're, okay, great. You're going to go over there. I'll go there. <laughs> uh, from Mrs. Linville, Braden is an absolute pleasure to have both in the classroom and an FFA. He's very kind, uh, and he, he's always willing to help out. He's always the first to jump on a task that sounds less than appealing, such as cleaning up after hog roast or pushing a wheelbarrow <laughs> full of stone for our landscape class. He is very responsible and handles leadership roles well. In the classroom, he is also very polite and nice to his classmates. For Mrs. Bellman, Braden is, is an amazing young man. He's always willing to jump right in with whatever we have going on. Uh, he's very kind and respectful uh, with all those that are around him. From Mr. Zapata, Braden is a great kid that works hard in my class. One of his best qualities is that he's very polite and respectful. I hope he takes more art classes in the future. And from Mr. Hutcherson, Braden Myers is a dedicated learner. He always is attentive and interested in class and asks the best science-related questions. He relates to topics well uh, with his current understanding, and you can tell that he takes the information from class and uses it to adjust his current perceptions, which is what every science teacher loves to witness in their students. Big round of applause for Braden Myers. <laughs> And last but not least, Ms. Brooklyn Johnson. <coughs> Where are you going to stand? I don't know. 
My hair's gray. <laughs> Brooklyn is, a, is a, don't look at me. <laughs> Brooklyn is an amazing young woman. She's always there for her fellow students and works and works in order to make sure everyone around her is smiling. She is quick to jump in and help with whatever's going on, and that's Mrs. Bellman. For Mrs. Provo, Brooklyn is one of those students you really like to have in class because if no one else will answer a question, I can always count on her. She has a good attitude and is a leader no matter what cooking group she is assigned to. Uh, from Mr. Zapata, Brooklyn has been to my class a few different times, and I can say that she is a great kid. She, is, she has a very good sense of humor, and it's fun to hear her make other students laugh. From Ms. Engel, Brooklyn is a hard worker. She's a natural leader in her lab groups and is always willing to answer questions in class. Brooklyn has a great attitude and is a joy to have in class. And on, on a personal note, I was in my office today hard at work, and she comes barging in the uh, my, my office and says, Mr. Conley, for the first time ever, I have all A's, and I jumped up, and I and I was able to give her a big high five. So, Brooklyn Johnson. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I want to say thank you to all the the students and uh, families and guests for coming. Um, at this time, if you don't want to stay for the board meeting, you're more than welcome to. Because I know it's just thrilling. <laughs> but if you don't wish to stay, feel free to leave. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> All right. Um, the board recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express concerns regarding agenda items. For a fair and orderly public expression, the board will provide a period for public, public comments at regular public meetings of the board on meeting agenda items only. The presiding officer each board meeting at, at which public participation is permitted shall administer the procedures of the board for its conduct. Comments will be limited to board meeting agenda items only with a time limit of three to five minutes. Does anybody want to make a comment before we go on? Didn't think so. Okay. Um, so um, now we're going to uh, the section where we're going to the adoption of the agenda is recommended that the um, agenda for the March 2023 um, meeting be approved as presented with additions, corrections, deletions as recommended by the board. Do I have a motion? Natalie. Do I have a second? Kim. All those four. Five zero zero. Okay, it is recommended that the minutes from the February 13th, 2023 meeting be approved as presented. Do I have a motion for that? Kim. Um, do I have a second? Dennis, all those four? Five zero zero. Um, approval of the claims. It is recommended that the claims numbers 15963 through 16142. One, four, two, be approved as presented. Do I have a motion? Kim, do I have a second? Natalie, all those four. Five, zero, zero. Okay, I'm gonna <coughs> hand this over. Yeah. Trent, and if anybody has comments, we'll make those comments before we vote. Sure. Uh, the first agenda item um, is a opportunity we have through Indiana State University. Uh, we were part of a 3E grant both with the Southern Indiana Education Center and Indiana State University um, and that 3E grant is allowing us to provide some more uh, opportunities for our students, uh, some more uh, CTE, uh, career technical education classes, uh, and one thing that Indiana State has offered us is to become a preferred partner with them. Now, this is actually going to help our employees more than more than anything. So, if you you read what we have there in the agenda, uh, basically, this partnership is going to allow our employees to enter um, into Indiana State University degree programs with a 15% discount on tuition costs, 
uh, waiving any application fees or enrollment deposits, and um, they will expedite uh, reviewing transfer credits from other uh, universities. So I was very excited when they offered this because it allows our employees, if they're looking to, you know, start a master's, finish a master's, uh, get some more, take some more classes, whatever, for um, continuing their, their education and, and getting their uh, license renewed and that sort of thing, gives them a chance to do that with some, paying out some less money. So I'm recommending that we uh, enter into that agreement with them. Do have a motion? Kim, second. Sharon, all those four, five zero zero. Thank you. Next up is uh, every so often we, uh, seems like here recently, it's been every few months, three to four months, we are updating uh, board policies through NEOLA. Uh, you have a big paragraph there that kind of describes what NEOLA is and why we use NEOLA and that sort of thing. Um, every so often they send us policy updates. Sometimes it can be simple as changing a few words. Other times it's taking out a bunch of language, putting in some language, but basically it's uh, lawyers looking at, at policies and keeping us current with both state and federal policies. So we are at the time where we are going to have, I'm recommending we have our first reading of uh, Neo NEOLA Policy Update, Volume 32, Number 2. Those are on the website. Um, you, can, you can click on those to, to look at them. First reading doesn't mean we're going to read all of them because we'd be here all night. <laughs> it just means that the board has had them. They've read through them. They've given me any comments. Um, I make any changes that, that uh, or... You know, sometimes there's areas where we get to choose what we're putting into these uh, policies based on the, the lawyer saying, well, you've got these choices here. So um, the reading just means, means that they've read through them, um, but we're not adopting them tonight. That comes next month as long as there's no um, issues that keep us from doing that. But So tonight I'm recommending that uh, we uh, approve the, the first reading of the NEOLA policies. Any comments? No, I just, I really appreciate using NEOLA because back in the time, we <laughs> did not have NEOLA mm -hmm. on my previous time on the board and started that process with yep. them, and I don't know how well we did it before. No. <laughs> absolutely no yeah, it's, it's, it's tedious enough with NEOLA. Yeah. I couldn't imagine right. not having it, so, right. exactly. yeah. yeah. All right, do I have a motion? Natalie, do I have sure, a second? I'll go second. <laughs> well, you know, I gotta ask for a second, so. Okay, I'll go second. Okay, <laughs> Sharon. All those four? Five zero zero. Thank you. Next up, uh, it is time for us to take a look at our mowing bids that came in and make a recommendation um, to award that mowing contract, seeing as how Hopefully spring is coming. I know it hasn't felt like the past few days, but the grass is going to start growing and it'll be time to, to get to that. So uh, to be fully transparent, I wanted to discuss those mowing bids at a public meeting and, and uh, then make a recommendation on um, who I feel we should, we should use and see what the board thinks about that. So okay. I'll just go through the mowing bids that, that came in and discuss them a little bit. Uh, the first one I have here is from Pro Stripes Lawn Care. Uh, their quote was for $2,250 uh, per mow and trim. So that includes both mowing and weed eating. Um, let's try to see if I can leave anything out. Spray was on there. Yeah, I think that was just for mowing and and weed eating. So that was Pro Stripes. Uh, next is Vaughn's Lawn Care out of uh, Spencer. Uh, their quote is for uh, $1,400 uh, per mow and weed eating. And then for spraying, that would be $525 per spraying event. Next is Route 54. 
And their quote is, um, basically from April to May, uh, because of the way we, we had this, this bidding on there, um, some broke it down a little bit differently, which is absolutely fine. Um, if they are doing the, the trimming, so this is for mowing and trimming, was for $940 per time. And then if they are just mowing and not trimming, $685 per session. And then applying uh, herbicide for spraying would be $400 per, per spray. Next is Inman Property Service. Their quote is, um, if just mowing, $1,150 per mow. If they are doing the trimming, that adds $200 to that total. So if they're doing both, it'd be uh, 1,350 per time they were here. And then spraying is 750 per application. And then lastly, we had um, Craig Quimby. Which is um, it's the right page here. It's a spring. There we go. His quote was um, one thousand six hundred eighty dollars per mo. Um, that included weed eating and then spraying was going to be subcontracted out through another company and that was going to be uh, $2,000 per application. So those were the bids that we had come in. Um, I was very happy that we received the amount that we did. I was happy that uh, it was timely, they, they all got them in. Um, ahead of schedule when, when we wanted them. Um, based off of what I, I looked at, and we've, uh, this is the third time we have bid out services since I've been here. This is my fourth year here. There's only been one year we've, we've taken care of it ourselves, and we just don't have the manpower to do that at this time. Um, we've used uh, two different uh, mowing companies. Um, based off of what I saw, um, my recommendation to the board would be that we used uh, Inman property, is that how we, you know, let me get it right, Inman property service. Um, while it is not necessarily, necessarily the lowest bid, um, it's close. Um, I feel that um, us giving it out to a variety of companies um, every so often does not hurt anything. I think it's good to, to spread the wealth per se to uh, companies from around the area. Um, Inman Property Services, they're also local and I think it'll be uh, good to have them very close where they can get to us very quickly when needed to. So for those reasons, um, I'm recommending In Inman Property Service for the mowing bid. Anybody got any comment or anything they want to discuss about this? before we vote? So, Pro Stripes did not have a spraying in their quote at all? I did not, no, I did not see anything for spraying. Sure sure yeah, so yeah, I did not see anything in there for spraying. And then Vaughn's was mow and trim for the 1400? Yeah. Vaughn's, yes. Okay. Yep. And where, where's Vaughn's at? Vaughn's out of Spencer. Yep, Route 54 is out of Linton. Okay. Linton. Yep. And then Craig. Vaughn's, is from Vaughn's and Spencer. Oh, that's Spencer. Yep. Uh, Craig Quimby, he lists his address as uh, Breeden Road in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. Kyle is Pro Stripes is local. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> was the spray on the Inman, was that 
I believe it I is. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Spraying will be done by CNS Lawn and Landscaping. Which I think in the in the past when we've done spraying, um, I think I'm trying to remember if Vaughn does it themselves or if they subcontract it out. I think Vaughn subcontracted that out too, if I remember right. We've used them in the past. I used somebody's license. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. Do we have any desire to sell our own spring? We we've considered it, yeah. Paying for one of our our guys to get licensed to do so, yes. How involved is that? It's. I mean, there's 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 test. You have to take a test. Uh, it's mostly that you have to go and take a test that uh, you have to pass to to be able to do it. So it's possible we can. It's a little bit more involved. I'm on the HHM board, Hoosier Heritage Management Board, and it's a little bit more involved than you think it was yeah. to be a licensed sprayer, now to have all the chemicals mm -hmm. and the cost of going to the school and then training. Mm -hmm. yep. It's not. I was really asking for possibly subbing it out ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know how often we can spray? Like every third mile or every? Um, I think in the past they came through the whole mowing season um, four to five times, something like that. Yeah, three to five. Cause some some of the stuff they use is pretty good at keeping the regrowth right. down. So. And Todd got licensed to do that. Last he did not get licensed. No. Oh, okay. He's he's been through some of the training and and that sort of thing, but okay. he's not fully through the licensing stuff yet. So it's something we could possibly think about for next year because mm -hmm. it's very timely and involved. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So your oh, recommendation sorry. is Inman? Inman Property Service, yep. Spray. Yep. Okay, I'll make that motion. We have a second? Yeah. Natalie? Okay, all those in favor of this? Five zero zero. Thank you. Yeah. Well, next we have a similar uh, thing I'm going to be going through. So um, pretty much the same time I put out a request for mowing bids, I also put out a request for um, HVAC slash maintenance, uh, kind of preventative maintenance quotes. So what we did is sent out a letter to just about every HVAC and maintenance company we could think of in the area, but we also advertised it in the, um, the Bloomington paper and the paper in Bedford, uh, took out an ad pretty much with the same letter requesting anybody who was interested in, in making a, a quote to be a, a preventative maintenance uh, company for our corporation to please do so. And we also encourage them to come and meet with me and David Fields, our maintenance director, and come and see the, the schools, take a look at, at what we've got going on with HVAC and different maintenance and, and equipment and things like that. And, uh, we had quite a few come and come and do that, and I really appreciate it. In the end, we received let's see, one, two, three, four, five quotes. I think we had seven companies come through. So five out of the seven companies decided to bid. So I was pretty pretty happy with that. So I'm going to do the same thing that I just did with the lawn care bids and um, kind of go through uh, these. These also, the boards are, has already seen these when they, they came in, they were due February 27th. So we've had plenty of time to, to see them and, and look at them and, and go through them. So the first one I have in front of me is uh, HFI. Their quote, and I guess I should say this too, they're, to make things fair to everybody, we gave each company an equipment list for the entire corporation. So they knew every single piece of equipment we had that they might 
deal with. We also gave them a questionnaire that asked them all the same questions. So we wanted them to make sure that uh, they were quoting the, the same uh, across the board. And I'm happy to say that the way they quoted it, it came in just kind of how we wanted it. So it was, it was fair to everybody. Um, so HFI, their, their quote uh, was an annual price of $36,480 to um, basically come in twice a year. So you're looking at summer and um, kind of a summer and, and winter type situation to come in and, and make sure that the HVAC equipment is is cleaned and, and up to par and, and if they come across any any issues then they can quote that to us about how much that might cost to, to fix and that sort of thing takes care of our kitchen equipment um, any, any basically any of our mechanical needs they're, they're gonna they're gonna check out all of our mechanical needs at the most two crucial times when you're going into cooling and when you're coming into heating um, so once again, their, their price to do that was $36,480. And this was all labor, right? Yes, we, we supply, um, they, they aren't going to supply any belts or, or filters or anything like that. We take care of all that. This is pretty much just the labor of them coming in and, and, uh, making sure that our equipment is running, running properly. All campuses, yep, yep. So that was HFI. Uh, the next one that put in a quote was commercial, commercial service. Theirs came in. Pardon me, some of these are at the front, some of them at the back. Well, this one might be at the front, I'm just not seeing it. Yeah, it's here somewhere. There we go. Uh, theirs came in at uh, $27,867. And once again, quotes, I went through them, they look pretty much you know, identical. They're, they're telling us they're gonna do the same things that, that all, everybody else was doing, and it's because that's what we advertised that, that we wanted through and our- And they went through the buildings and they saw all of the equipment. Uh, it depended on what experience they've had with us in the past. Like, for example, HFI, we've worked with HFI for years. Um, so they didn't really have to look at much because they, they know what they're dealing with and that sort of thing. Um, commercial service probably went through more than anybody because they hadn't really been in our buildings before. Um, Heflin, s &R Mechanical, which I haven't went over either one of them yet, um, they looked a little bit, but they had been in our buildings before too from, from either working for HFI, and they've branched off and started their own companies, um, or uh, I think we've used both of these gentlemen for some different jobs in the past, I think prior to me, but they've, they both felt very comfortable with not having to go through and see every single thing because they felt like they knew what we had going on. Thanks. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, Heflin. Industries is next, and they came in at an annual cost of uh, $33,280. Now, you talked about the um, kitchen equipment. I think a lot of people, we, we um, contract out our food services, but we still own. Yes, we own all equipment. Okay. The only thing we contract out is the labor. Okay. Yep. All the equipment belongs to us. Okay. Uh, next was eco-friendly mechanical. Um, they they probably saw a little bit more of the buildings too because they hadn't we haven't really worked with them very much either. Um, they came in. They, they quoted a little bit differently, but I think I ended up adding everything up. So I'll just kind of read, read through it. Um, 
their heating planned maintenance was for the uh, elementary and middle school was $1,760. High school and ag shop was 4000 So you have uh, $5,760 there. And then the cooling side for the elementary and middle school was 9890 High school and ag shop, um, 7960 if I do my math really quickly, that's seventeen thousand eight hundred and fifty, um, and that is for a total. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. I didn't realize I didn't have this total before. Twenty-three thousand six hundred and ten dollars. Um, they did put a separate on here of a plumbing maintenance um, of about twelve hundred dollars. So I'm assuming they would uh, that one. I didn't talk to them much about, but I'm assuming they would be going through some of our our plumbing and and uh, checking on just overall plumbing issues so that would add 1200 to it so yeah about 20 a little over 24,000 and then last one I have is SNR mechanical they came in at for the fall service would be 17,000 950 and for the summer service was 30,140 for a total of $48,090. So those were the bids that we had coming in. Um, based off of my time spent with all of those companies uh, when I met with them uh, going over what they uh, provided us um, I feel most comfortable and once again this isn't necessarily the lowest bid uh, I was happy that for the most part they all came in pretty close to one another um, I feel most comfortable recommending HFI main reason um, we've worked with them for several years now um, one of their techs in, in, uh, in general um, knows our HVAC system inside and out. Um, David calls on him uh, constantly and he will work with us and not necessarily even charge us for the time on the phone if he can help David walk through a, walk through a problem. I've also seen HFI quote, we, we asked for um, some quotes from these companies to do a particular job here in the near future that we're going to have to do on our big chiller out here, uh, putting some cooling towers in that, that's being recommended by the manufacturer. Um, so we had all these companies, we felt like, well, let's have all these companies quote that job. And uh, HFI came in quite a bit lower than the other companies. And that's kind of what we've seen historically is that they can, they can, through their relationships they have with suppliers and things, they can, they can get things a little bit cheaper than some of these other companies. So um, for those main reasons, I feel most comfortable recommending HFI for the uh, preventative maintenance contract. Any questions? They've been around here since the 90s. <laughs> they, they, know, they know the equipment. And so they'll do the, I guess you'd say the, the spring and summer maintenance. Mm -hmm. Is anything else on top of that? I mean, does that give us like a pool of uh, 800 hour, whatever, a, 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 a number of hours? And if we don't need that, then 
They are. They that are. A, yeah, HFI is estimating that their hours spent on for that price, they're estimating it'd be 380 hours. So I feel they're they're pretty stand up about everything. That if they it takes them less. I'm sure they would probably work with us on that and say, well, we spent less here, so now we've got a pool of hours that we can okay. use on some other things. Okay. But I do know the biggest thing, it's with what they're going to do for us, or any of these companies, what, they, what we're asking them to do for us, it's going to free up our maintenance guys to get some other jobs done that, like routine things around the building when something needs fixed or or that sort of thing, it, it frees, it's gonna free them up, in my opinion, to, to do some of those things around the building. Will that also, like, and I don't remember when we looked at these, but that will they guarantee, like, response time? So if we sign a contract to commit using, you know, we're gonna get, you know, if we have an issue, we're gonna get, you know, somebody out here within yeah, part of the questionnaires they filled out was some of those very things. Um, and that's one thing I'll, I'll say about HFI. We've never had an issue with them. When we, when we call them, if, if, it's a, if it's an HVAC situation that needs very timely response, they're, they're here. Like I can tell you when the, this summer, when we were two days into school and the chiller gets hit by lightning, they were here like that. So. Okay. Um, yeah, their response time's always been, been very good. Okay. I mean. On a similar note, related to freeing up our guys' time in for the other work that needs to be done in the facility, um, will you guys be putting together a strategy for the summer then, or, or, or working with us? Will we see something from you with, related to that, or about some of the work we might be working out then? Yeah, I definitely can. We always we always start talking. It's about this time we start planning for for what jobs we're going to get done in the summer. Like I can tell you right now, one major project we have to do this summer is the wastewater plant here on this campus. Um, you know, it's the older one. It's the it's the 1960s one. The concrete walls have to be redone. They're starting to fall in. And that's one of the things when IDEM, IDEM comes through every year and, and inspects us, that's one of the things we've been dinged on and it's, it's time to get that done. So we've already got, I think, three quotes on that con concrete work. So that's gonna be one major thing that we'll be working on. But uh, yeah, I can definitely put together something for you guys to look at of what we hope to accomplish in the summer. I think that's a big one. Yeah, that's probably going to be the only major project we're doing because of the cost of it. I mean, it's, it's probably going to be around 120 to 130, 35,000 to get all that done. So you're recommending HFI? Yes, I am. Quote, yep. I'd like to make that motion. All right. Accept the recommendation of HFI. Second. Sharon. All those four. Five zero zero. Thank you. Appreciate you taking the time to look through all, all of that as I did. So uh, very helpful. OK, next, uh, very excited to do several of our, our next uh, items here. Uh, we, a after we were able to give raises to our teachers uh, this past fall after collective bargaining, uh, we uh, wanted to wait until we got a few months into our new budget here in 23 before we uh, committed to raises for our classified because we just wanted to see how our appropriations were running and, and things like that and uh, happy that it's time that we need to recommend some raises for our classified staff and very happy to do that I want to I want to make sure that we're we're keeping our our people and uh, staying competitive with schools around us and uh, I know we can't always compete with the with the private sector, but we're going to do our best to to keep our our people here and and helping them make wages that we we uh, know that they deserve. So, the first uh, recommendation I'm making here is for our director of transportation slash mechanic. Uh, that's uh, Dennis Carter. Um, 
I'm making the recommendation to increase his uh, combined salary. So that's what he makes for director of transportation, for being our mechanic, and for driving when we need him, which is often. <laughs> I'm uh, suggesting we increase his pay to $74,500. Now, he doesn't have a regular route, does he? He, just he does not have a regular route. He just fills in when, well, when we need to. There, yeah, he, he fills in a lot. <laughs> Motion? Dennis? Second? Now, all those four? Five zero zero. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next is for our treasurer. I am making the recommendation to increase uh, Mariah Crane's salary to $51,000 a year. That keeps us um, pretty much right at the average of the. Um, the SIEC area. One thing I love about our Southern Indiana Education Center is they ask us to, to they, they send us out a spreadsheet every year and it's voluntary, but we do it, we take part in it. And they ask us to put in our salaries for, uh, they, they do a certified staff one and then they do a classified staff one. Well, where it helps superintendents is we can see all of the surrounding schools in all of the surrounding counties of what everybody's making so that we can try to stay competitive. And moving Mariah to this 51,000 keeps her at the average of what other treasurers in the area are making. Uh, when, I, when I came here, we were low, mm -hmm. um, we were extremely bad. low. Yeah. So over the past few years, I've uh, I brought Marilyn up when Marilyn came back and now I'm trying to bring her up to where we need to be. So that just keeps us basically at the average. Salary. I would just like to comment that Mariah is not average. No. <laughs> her salary her, is average. Her, 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 no. Excellent job. No, yes, she, she does. She doesn't. She, doesn't, she, she yeah. and uh, Marilyn yeah. both. Marilyn's been yeah. training her because yeah. we're going to lose Marilyn, I'm sad to say. But, well, maybe not fully lose her, but <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, that's my recommendation for Mariah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion by uh, <laughs> Sharon. Second by <laughs> Natalie. And all those four? Five zero zero. Yeah, you gotta walk that fine line. You know, we're gonna miss we're gonna miss um Maryland. Maryland, Maryland. sorry. Brain fart, but we're welcome. Yes. We're glad to have Mariah. Yep. And it's I, I, two M's I was I, I have brain to, wasn't fun. Yeah. I have to say that it's it's the way it's worked out for this transition has been great. It doesn't always work out that way. If you you lose your treasurer, if I didn't have a succession plan, I'd be really panicking because that is an unbelievably important job that not everybody can do. So I'm stumbling there for a while. Yeah, so it's uh it's been great that we've had this succession plan. Yep. So I know some other schools have had that, and yep. it's not a good. Yep. Uh, next up is for uh, Treva Lukens. She is our deputy treasurer, and I've made her also our school nutrition program director. One thing, when you, when you contract out your food service, you still have to have somebody that is our employee that is considered your school nutrition program director. That is, that is um, demanded by the DOE. With that comes a decent amount of work that she has to do. And I know that amount of work because I've been doing some of it um, with the help of, of our food service uh, director in the past. But um, Treva came from the food service working uh, for Chartwell, so she knows a lot of this stuff. So uh, she was more than willing to take it on. I think she enjoys that, that part of the job, uh, working with the food service and, and making sure things are going well there. So, but it has added uh, work onto her plate and I wanna reward her for that. So my recommendation is to cre increase her salary to $47,000 a year. Do you have a motion, Sharon? Second. Second, Kim? All those four? Five zero zero. Uh, next is uh, Carrie Ann Helms. Uh, she's our central office uh, receptionist, but she also does helps me a lot with uh, HR, all the all the resumes and and um, employment records run through her basically. 
and she also helps greatly with our transportation side of things. So um, she's doing a wonderful job for us. So I'm recommending that we increase her salary to forty-two thousand dollars a year. Sharon, second by Kim. All those four five zero zero. And I have to brag on our now that we've got our, our central office here taken care of, I have to brag on them for a little bit. I've, I've been at several school corporations um, and even as a building principal, you get to know the, the central office staff because you, you go to meetings up there, you're dealing with the treasurer with your own building level money and everything. And um, I have to say that I have not been at a school corporation that has had a a central office that works as cohesively as this one. I've been at a few that it's it's toxic in there. You've got people that don't like each other and or they're jealous of each other. I mean, I just I, I can't explain how, how that works. But um, this here, everybody, they just we get along. Um, we we talk things out. We bounce ideas off of each other. Um, and I'm very appreciative of our of our central office staff. So. Just wanted to get that in there. Thank you. We're family. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Next up are our uh, bus drivers. I am making a recommendation to increase the daily route pay. So this is what they would make daily driving the route uh, to what? Well, this is based off of longevity. So if they have driven <coughs> zero to nine years, they will make $105 a day if they have driven um, 10 or more years for us for us yes. yes for us they would make $115 per day and then I'm recommending we also increase the rate for extracurricular trips to $15 an hour um, we all know our drivers do a wonderful job for us I want to keep rewarding them for that and Raising it to that definitely keeps us right in line with uh, where everybody else is. It actually keeps us above the average, I can tell you that right now, and probably keeps us more in about the top 25% of what I've seen all the schools around us paying. So that's my recommendation. I'm proud to do it because hearing some of the horror stories other school corporations are having to go through yep. to get kids home and to school. Yep. We're not having to deal with that, thanks to Dennis and our bus drivers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do I have a motion? Natalie. You have to be faster. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning. He's new. He's like. Okay, oh. seconded by Dennis. I know this. All those four, five, zero, zero. Next are our instructional assistants, office staff, uh, building office staff, uh, facilitators, custodial staff and uh, miscellaneous part-time staff. Those are our, our hourly paid um, staff members. I'm making the recommendation that we uh, increase that hourly rate by $1 an hour. So that, that's gonna vary a little bit. That's gonna take uh, our hourly staff anywhere from, I think about 1265 to 13-ish, 14 is for some. Some that'll take them to 15 something, but that's very few and okay. in a long time. So. Yep. Facilitators, that'll take them up to 16. And those are people like uh, in the elementary, we have an <coughs> art facilitator, so they're not a licensed teacher, but they do a wonderful job for us. So that art facilitator, um, library facilitator, um, computer, thank you. Um, yeah. So. I think it's gonna, it, it, it's not everything I would like to give, but it's what we can afford at this time. So yeah, I think a, a dollar raise an mm -hmm. hour is. Do we have a dollar figure on what that's? Overall cost? Yeah. Yeah, overall, I brought that with me. So for all these raises, this is for everybody that well, I recommend. Oh, the do the, oh that I don't have in front that of me. I I can oh, that's okay, I was just curious. I just know that we could let people, just so people had an idea about how much. Yeah, the like. overall, I can tell you for all these raises that I'm, I'm recommending, it's an increase of $175,506. Okay. Yep. But I did, I, we don't have it broken down by. Okay. 
And that includes Category. bus drivers? Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's my recommendation for that line item. Motion? Dennis? I don't need to uh, Okay. <laughs> Second, Kim. All those four? Yes, thank you to our staff. Yep. Uh, I do want to increase uh, sub pay. <clears throat> we, uh, we don't do too bad with, with subs. I think we do better than a lot of places in, in some areas. Um, we could still definitely use more, so here's my plug to anybody watching. We can definitely use more subs, so please, please sub for us. can sub too, as long as you <laughs> just can't get paid. <laughs> so if you want to sub, I would, I would help. You want me to teach anybody anything? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. You just can't get paid. You can sub. So I am recommending that we increase sub pay to $80 a day for uh, regular substitutes. So that's, you know, non-licensed other than the substitute license they get from the state. Uh, $90 a day if you're a licensed teacher who wants to sub. And then $100 a day for uh, retired Eastern Green teachers. Do we have a excuse, like are most of our subs, you know, unlicensed, licensed? Or most are. Um, Unlicensed. Uh, yeah. Unlicensed. Yeah. Okay. I don't know the last time we've paid a licensed teacher no. or a retired teacher to sub. Okay. How does our sub pay compare to our adjacent county? It's we're competitive in my opinion. This yeah. is getting there. This is good. I am yeah. I am just tickled that this is going up because that had been a major yeah. issue for many, many years, so I'm glad it's happening. We're definitely not the lowest. I'd say we're, we're probably closer to the, to the middle now, more the average. Um, yeah. That's All right, motion. do I have a motion to approve this? Sherry? Yeah. <laughs> now, and then all those four? Five, zero, zero. We can Thank get you. you the paperwork afterwards. If Mike, you want I'll do it on computers. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to pass your background check. Yeah. It's not for me. It was not for me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm a computer whiz. <laughs> well, once again, thanks for listening as I talked about all of those, but I'm very happy to, I wanted to talk a lot about it because we have, we have some great staff here and I wanted to make sure I, I uh, highlighted that. So. Continuing on with uh, personnel here, um, this one saddens me because he's a great guy. Um, high school credit recovery. I'm recommending that we approve the resignation of Michael Black. Uh, he was actually done as of March 11th, right before we went on uh, spring break. Um, Mr. Black's been here. I'm not even sure how many years he's been here. It's been it's been quite a few. Yeah, but. He works so great with, with our kids that, that are in there for credit recovery and um, keeps them on track. I know he communicates very w communicated very well with the, with the administration. If there's a kid that wasn't doing what they're supposed to be doing, he did that. But he also wanted to make sure they knew if they had, they had kid, or he had kids that were going above and beyond and really moving through that cre credit recovery system. But, um, he's battling some health problems, and he, he's doing the right thing. Even though we would want to keep him, he needs to take care of himself. So um, begrudgingly, I will recommend that we accept his, his uh, retirement. If I, I'm going to plug the media club. They did a podcast with him, mm. and it's pretty, we learned some pretty amazing things about him that literally nobody knew about him. Mm -hmm. you, know, like, you know, and uh, we were just kind of stunned at some of the uh, history he had had yeah. um, that he'd never really bragged about. Yep. You know, so it, it, it's, a, it's one of our more interesting podcasts we did. So if you get a chance, you can uh, look up Thundercast and learn a lot more about um, Mr. Black. Nice. Do you have a motion? To Dennis? Second? Kim? All those four? Thank you. Next, we have the resignation from Michael Hartman as the high school, middle school behavioral interventionist, effective March 20th. Michael is, um, he's getting his degree in counseling. Um, and he is actually going to go work for um, adult and child 
So he's still going to be around because he's going to be one of the counselors that comes in through adult and child rehabilitation services to give counseling services to our kids. So he's just leaving our employment and going to somebody else's employment. So um, I'm recommending that uh, we accept his, his resignation, even though we're going to keep him around in a different capacity. All right, I have a motion. Sure. Chairman? Sure. Seconded by Sharon. All those four. <clears throat> uh, making the recommendation next to approve the resignation of Carrie Fiddler as an instructional assistant effective March 2nd. A motion. Dennis. Second. Kim. All those four. Five zero zero. And we thank Carrie for her service to Eastern Green. Uh, next, I am making a recommendation for someone to replace Mr. Black. Uh, we're changing that, uh, just adding a little bit of, a, of, of some work to that person's plate, but it makes sense. Um, so I'm recommending that we put Jeffrey Graham in as the high school ISS slash online credit recovery facilitator. So basically, um, he's going to be doing all the, the, the job that Mr. Black did. We're just going to add the ISS portion to that, um, and, and that'll work out just fine. We, we ran into an issue the past few years um, with being able to staff ISS, um, and, then, and then also when we lost the, um, they call it ATS, where we would, it, it, uh, kids that would get suspended would go to WRV instead of just staying at home, when we lost that, um, it really put the high school in a bind with how do they handle discipline with very few ways of um, helping kids learn from their mistakes. So I'm glad that we can have, have ISS staffed a little bit better there and um, by adding to that, that, uh, that job description. So that's my recommendation. Motion? Four. Natalie? Mm -hmm. Second. Sharon. All those four? Five zero zero. Thank you. Next is a recommendation to approve Caitlin Hudson as an instructional assistant in the high school effective March 21st. Hello, buddy. Shirley. Second. Dennis. All those four? Five zero zero. Thank you for that. I know they've been trying to uh, hire that one for some time now. I think we still, have one, <laughs> we still have one. Still There's have one. one. Yeah, one. still have one available position at the high school for an instructional assistant. Yep. And I know we're. I don't know where we're at on. Have you started any uh, hiring processes for the? Uh, we just print them off. And we're yeah. yeah, I knew you guys were looking at them for the uh, behavioral interventionist position. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, art both, yeah. Okay. Next, we have high school boys golf. Um, I'm recommending to approve Jeffrey Graham as the boys golf assistant coach for the 2023 season. Do have a motion? Yeah. Second. Natalie. And all those four? Five, zero, zero. Okay. <clears throat> Next is high school volleyball. I'm making a recommendation to renew Kelsey Fry as the, well, me and Mr. Buskirk both, uh, make a recommendation to uh, renew Kelsey Fry as the high school volleyball coach uh, for the, well, it'll be the 23-24. Well, technically it's 23. They're, 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 they're done before December. Yeah, they're, they're, so 23 okay. season, yeah. yeah. Next school year. Okay, do I have a motion? Sure. Second. Natalie, all those four, five, two, zero. Next, if you remember, we, um, you approved us to be able to add the position of athletic event coordinator this school year. It basically just hel helps out the high school and the middle school very much so. And uh, we split that into three different sessions to give different people a chance at earning a little bit extra money if they wanted to and it's worked out that way we've had three different people that are 
that are going to be doing this. So for the spring athletic event coordinator, Mr. Buskirk and I are recommending uh, Jamie Bellman for that position. Okay, we'll do a motion by Natalie and we'll second by Dennis. What do you do, Sarah? Where's your hand at? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like drag racing, you know. Ladder Jeopardy, I mean, he's got yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all those four? Five there. Okay. Next, we're making a recommendation to approve Emily Pittman as volunteer middle school track coach for spring 2023. I have a motion, Natalie. <laughs> Second, Sharon. All those four. Next, we have an interesting um, opportunity for football. So I'm making a recommendation for the high school football team to travel out of state next year to Bridgeport, Illinois, and where they will play Red Hill High School on September 29th. So how this has come about is um, Owen Valley had to drop us as a uh, as our, our game with them because they're they're picking up I think they're adding somebody to their conference so they have to pick up that person that left us without uh, a game that week Aaron scoured the area and anywhere that was drivable for us to make and there was nobody that really had the opportunity to play us well he found this team um, it's just across the border um, west of Vincennes, so it's not that long of a drive. Um, this will be one year us going to them, the following year this high school comes to us, and that gives Aaron these two years to find somebody that week within reason, reasonable driving for us to be able to play somebody. So that's And just so everybody's clear, we have to approve any out-of-state travel. Out-of-state or overnight, overnight trips, yeah. yep. So that's why we're approving just one game. Correct. I have a motion, Dennis. Second, Natalie. And all those four. Thank you. That should be in. Let's make sure we beat the Illinois team. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work over there. That doesn't matter. <laughs> I, it doesn't, but I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, next we have some donations. Once again, I, I don't know that I've had a board meeting since I've been superintendent. We haven't had donations, which is wonderful. I've always said that. We have a very giving community. So, motion or a recommendation to approve the following donations. $200 from Russell and Kelly Gray to the Hunter Roberts Nancy Hacker Memorial Fund. $100 from Shane and Lee Roberts. <coughs> Is it Lee or Leah? Lee. Lee. Okay, I was re read it right. To the Hunter Roberts uh, Nancy Hacker Memorial Fund. Georgia Roberts, to, uh, $100 from Georgia Roberts to the Hunter Roberts Nancy Hacker Memorial Fund. $100 from David and Beth Roberts to the Hunter Roberts Nancy Hacker Memorial Fund. $50 from Pleasant Kentucky Ridge Bap Baptist Church to the Eastern Green um, Elementary Middle School for the TAP program in memory of Sheila Workman. $800, that's an anonymous donation to the EG Middle School Class of 2028. $345 anonymously to EG Middle School Class of 2028, $34 anonymously to the EG Middle School Class of 2028, $2,500 from the EG Football Boosters to Eastern Green High School Athletics for the Huddle Video Review and Performance Analysis. Okay, you have a motion? For all that? Okay. Kim, seconded by Sharon. And all those four. Five zero zero. Okay. We do not have any late items. However, I do want to bring one thing to the board's attention that I'm going to put on the agenda for April. It's something that I will ask you to approve retroactively. Um, it just wasn't. It just didn't get to us in time, and I didn't want to surprise you with it. But it's something that has been going on for ages. So the fifth grade trip to Bradford Woods is April 5th through 7th. Yeah. That's an overnighter. <laughs> that will be before the April board meeting. They got it to me just today, but I didn't want to stick it on as a late item. So I'm going to ask you, you guys. Put it on? Yeah. 
if let's, you want to do it, that's fine. Yeah. That okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, just we'll add it. Then yeah. that would be fine with me if that's okay. what you want to do. So. Sure. I don't we'll think we want to go to those kids and say, sorry, I can't go. Don't <laughs> uh, I can, <laughs> we might mess with I can make that recommendation. Years. Okay. Okay, so I will make the recommendation then as a late item. That we that the board approves the overnight field trip for fifth grade to attend uh, Bradford Woods on April fifth through seventh. All right, motion. Second. You, you can't second. Ah. You're, gonna, you're just being greedy. Just you. Okay, Dennis and all those four. Let's send the kids to Bradford Woods. Perfect. Thank you very Is much. Is this the first time back? No, they went last year. Last year before. Yeah. For it's just during the day. day right? No, 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 no. Like three days. they went overnight last year. Oh, they did go overnight last yeah. year. Two nights okay. and three days. Did you spend overnight last year? Yeah. 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 Was it the year before? Yeah. The year, year before, before was just a day trip. Yeah. Was a, sorry, yeah. that's why I was wondering. It was cold. Too. Oh, it was cold. She pointed yep. out it was freezing. Yeah. I went for a day. <laughs> that would be the only late item. So, okay. um, ready for discussion and information items. So, any uh, particular building want to go first? Elementary. <laughs> All right. We're not going to argue here. Well, hang on. I got to get rid of this because if it's on there, I will read it. Beth and Lisa do that to me a lot. <laughs> yeah, now it's good in the morning. It thinks it's slide over a little bit. <laughs> this way? No, this way. Well, your pen was going that way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Yeah, right in front of Patrick. That's good. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Blocking view. All right. Yeah. Congratulations, first of all, to uh, our student of the month, um, Lillian Nash. And it's time for my monthly show of gratitude to Mrs. Drummond for all of her hard work on yet another concert. Uh, the third grade folk festival was on March the 2nd. It was a lot of fun. Families were included in some of the dancing. She puts so much time and effort into these performances, and they are enjoyed by so many. Uh, we finished with our eye retesting just before spring break, and those results will go home with individuals, uh, second and third grade students on Friday, along with their third quarter report cards. So third quarter report cards will go home this Friday. Uh, the results will be released to individuals, but not um, school-wide or public until closer to the fall after the retesting that they have in the summer. Um, we do have intervention plans in place for any individual student uh, who may not have passed, and teachers will be contacting uh, those parents by Wednesday of this week to let them know which route they've chosen for their student leading up to that retake. Uh, I just want to um, just give my acknowledgement to those teachers for all their hard work in preparing and administering those tests, uh, especially leading up to spring break as it's a very busy time. Uh, all of our classrooms participated in World Tour Weeks leading up to spring break as well. The kids really enjoyed their time spent traveling around the world and studying different countries, cultures, customs, foods, languages, and traditions. Um, more testing. The iLearn window is just around the corner for our grades three and four. That window opens on April 17th, uh, but we will not begin in the elementary until um, a few days into that. Kindergarten Roundup is scheduled for April the 28th. We do have a meeting before then, but um, Mr. Carmichael and I spent some time together working on something we feel is pretty fun um, and exciting kind of leading up to that day. Just don't give it away. I know. Uh, <laughs> top secret. Yep. Um, our special education teachers and staff are beginning their ACRs there. Uh, there's so much work that goes into planning and managing the needs of our students and I want to give them a nod for all of their efforts. Um, lastly, I want to give a special voice of uh, appreciation to Megan Birch, who is our library facilitator, Lori Van Dievender, our corporation librarian, and Jamie Bellman, our high school JAG teacher, for all of their hard work that went into our book fair, Read Across America Week in early March. Um, beyond that, I have to tell you just how thankful I am for um, our high school students in that JAG class who not only created but decorated so many things for our library and school for that week. Uh, in addition to working at the book fair and reading to our students, they also helped hang the flags for our World Tour weeks all throughout our hallways, uh, which was certainly not something they were expected to do. Um, and a couple of them dressed up as Cat in the Hat, thing one and thing two on the final day and visited our classrooms. and. It uh, made me very proud to see our high school students bring such joy and many smiles to our small Thunderbirds. So I cannot thank them and the high school enough for that. But did they bring any green eggs in hand? Um, someone did. I don't know oh, who okay. did that. But, <laughs> oh, okay. but it, it, it wasn't me. All right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> 
we start good TV. <laughs> <laughs> we started the fourth nine weeks today and report cards, like Dustin said. Uh, the email actually will go out from Leslie Kimmel on, on this Friday. Friday. Our last teacher PD day will be this coming Monday, March 27th, so no school for students that day. Uh, thank you to each grade level for taking a field trip. This is the first year in several years that we've been able to do that. A lot of work went into planning. Fifth grade will be going to Bradford Woods. Sixth and seventh grade just attended a hockey game in Indianapolis. And eighth grade did half a day at Ivy Tech, learning about pathways, and half a day at Hoosier Hills, learning about the opportunities there. Also, eighth grade will attend Washington, D.C. this year as well. Is that going to happen? It's going to happen. How many are going? Um, I was a little shocked. It's, it's the majority of the grade low. High majority, actually. Okay. Um, but, but again, that's that's all based on, um, well, not all, but a big piece of it on grades and behavior. And there's, there's a few kids in limbo there right now. So okay. So and let me say something before I forget, To um, Jennifer Shively will be here in April to present to you guys once again on a possible trip for those classes that missed the D.C. trip during COVID. So uh, she's got an updated possible trip that might work better. Okay. So, sorry. I know if I didn't say it, I'd forget it. No, they're fine. But I'm excited. They're excited uh, to, to get back to normal and do the Washington, D.C. trip. It's a trip of a lifetime. It really is. Um, I've done it a lot to yeah. two school corporations. And I'll just say I, I lose seven or eight pounds every time I do it because there's so much walking. The first, <laughs> the first day is 25, 27,000 steps. Anyway, I'll move on. Our incentive breakfast, uh, last one of the year, will be next Wednesday, March 29th, first thing in the morning. Um, this is a big one. Thank you to Allison and Alex Clary for all of their planning and hard work that went into keeping Star Lab going. Saw a lot of elementary oh. kids and middle school kids get great lessons and have a fun time. I popped in. It's neat. I don't know if any of you guys have ever, I know you have, but any of you guys have ever done it's neat. Um, even for me, I'd like to have one in my house, to be honest. Many fun things are planned for the last few weeks of school, a dodgeball tournament, science fair, whole school barbecue cookout, and awards day. So a lot of fun things coming up here in the next couple of months. The timeline for iLearn testing is from Monday, April 17th, Dustin mentioned that, to Friday, May 12th. I like to put that in newsletters from starting in August, multiple Harmony emails. Um, it's so important that the students are, are at school on those dates so they can be tested properly in order for consistency and continuity. And. Uh, I think that's it. I hope everyone had a nice and relaxing spring break. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, as he just said, um, we would like to, we are happy to welcome back from spring break. We hope you guys had a um, nice one. Uh, and as we touched on, we'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to Mr. Mike Black, who has chosen to retire. Uh, he truly has impacted countless lives in a very positive way. I, I see kids all all the time in this room just really enjoying his just presence. So we will very much miss him and wish him the best. Uh, and as well as Mr. Hartman, uh, he's taking a job with a dolphin child and we would like to again wish him well. Uh, in terms of academic stuff, we have two AP mock exams left this week. Uh, they're no mockery though, because they're, they, they really do try to prepare students to uh, get great scores on the real AP mock, uh, the, the real AP exams. Uh, and so uh, those are next week. Uh, additionally, we took SATs last, uh, or the week before spring break on March 2nd. Juniors took this in the gym and it was proctored by Mr. Kirkendall, Ms. William, Ms. Moody. Uh, thank you to all our juniors for taking it very seriously and really doing their best. It was, it was nice to see I pop in and they were head down working. So it was, it was, it was really nice to see that they were uh, taking it seriously. And the results should be back sometime uh, in April. Uh, also, sort of grades, I've, I've really taken an, an interest in, in, in uh, the all school grades and how we can improve those and best. And I, I sent an email the other day uh, with some stats, but in terms of just the third nine weeks, I pulled this today and the, the, the report cards go out Wednesday or Thursday, so this may change a little bit, but um, not too much numbers, but just bear with me. Uh, 1,262 grades are in harmony right now for the third nine weeks. Uh, 675 of those are A's of any kind. Uh, 287 Bs, 167 Cs, 80 Ds, and 44 Fs. I mean, if we want great data, that's, that's exactly what data should, should look like. So therefore, those with a D or better passing all of the classes, 95.8% of our kids passing all of their classes with, 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 with passing grades, um, with almost 90% of them being a C or better. And of course, we, we'll never forget those, 
those, those lower grades that we're really diving into, um, trying to reach them in the best way we can. But we're seeing that the number of kids with those Fs are decreasing. And so it's, it's really great to see. Uh, also in attendance rate, I, uh, we gave the staff as, as a challenge at the end of last nine weeks to increase our attendance rate overall to 92.5%. We were at 90.32% at the end of the second nine weeks, and right now we're at 91.5. Do that math, exactly 1.25, exactly half of 2.5% of, of the goal. So in, in just one nine weeks, we're, we're halfway there. So um, cool. kids and staff are doing some fantastic stuff. Uh, 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 we have a blood drive tomorrow. That's, that's sponsored by our JAG department. Um, JAG's doing a fantastic uh, things over there at the high school. Also Thursday, we have 18 students that are gonna be inducted into our National Honor Society. The benchmark there was a 3.5 GPA, which is just under an A, an a minus average. So we have some awesome kids that are gonna be inducted there. Uh, this Saturday, Raleigh Dance Marathon. Uh, there's uh, three separate sections, first through fifth grade, from 11 to one, six through eight, three to six, and nine to 12, seven to 10.30. So um, anybody wants to come on out? You don't have to be in high school. Yeah, I know you're past 12th grade, but it, I'm, I'm sure we'll we'll take you. We'll dance Are with we? you. We'll, we'll dance with you. And then, last but not least, a job fair next month, April 12th, during the school day, eight eight to two thirty. Um, we have about 50 businesses that have either expressed interest or or have confirmed yes to being there. And so it's on the job training as well as future employment for for our high school kids and of course the surrounding districts here. So. Um, some really great things uh, uh, that we're doing, and we really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have a whole lot because those guys always sum it up so well, but I just have a few things. I want to say uh, good luck to our spring sports and all the activities. Uh, I think they're in full swing right now, so um, not just sports, but all of our ECAs. You know, our, our, um, we've got a musical coming up in April, I believe, and just stuff like that. Yes. Yes. Um, also want to say congratulations to the National Honor Society. I had that down for this week, uh, those kids being inducted. Um, I want to alert parents, and we'll get this out soon too, about the possibility of summer school. Um, we always do summer school at the high school, but it's mostly online stuff. We haven't done um, summer school at the elementary or middle school in a few years, partly, one was due to COVID, but then um, last year we tried to get it up and running again and, and I think um, I think teachers needed a break at that point and that's, I understand that. Um, we're gonna see if we have teachers interested this year in teaching summer school to elementary and middle school. We have the money through ESSER funds to not only uh, pay them more than what we would normally pay them to do summer school, but also to provide transportation. Uh, we, were, we were able to do, we were going to be able to provide transportation last year too. We just didn't have um, enough people that, that wanted to teach. So if we have the staff that want to teach summer school, we will have summer school. But that also depends on the amount of kids too. We got to get the, you know, the, the, the parents that will um, decide that, that, that they want their kids to do that too. So. Anyway, we'll get more information out about summer school here very soon. Hopefully we'll be able to do it because, like I say, we have the ESSER funds. I can tell you right now, if we don't do summer school <clears throat> this summer, I'm going to have to reallocate some of those ESSER funds because if you remember, ESSER 3, 20% yeah. of that had to go toward learning loss. So if we don't do summer school this year, I'm going to have to reallocate that toward some other type of um, learning loss, whether that's ramping up the year uh, tutoring during the year and doing it all year instead of you know we sometimes wait a little bit to get into the school year um, or there's some other things we could possibly do for the learning loss part of it but we'll see if we can have summer school we can great if not we'll reallocate it and and figure out some other some different remediation type stuff we can do so. has there been a big turnout for elementary summer school in the past like pre-covid that i don't know yes and it, it really kind of depended. But there'd be some years and we'd have <coughs> 80, 90 kids coming. Okay. And we'd be able to feed them too. We'd have, yeah. we'd have the summer food program that they could, they could eat before they left. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We're getting a big take on the tutoring, right, in high school? There's, there's a, now it is, yes. There's a lot of kids that are really enjoying that and are staying after each day. So 
one day you'll have you know a couple, but one day's there's there's a lot in there. So. And we do provide for the elementary and middle school tutoring. We do provide transportation for that, and that's covered through ESSER funds too. So. We even bought a bus. We did. We bought a mini bus yeah. with ESSER funds. Yep. So that's all I have for discussion at this time. All right. Kim, do you have anything you want to say? Um, I just want to thank the team going down to work on their pathways. Mm -hmm. down, uh, yep. <laughs> Yep. Down there. Let's that. do the three E grant. We're yeah. adding some pathways at the high school, so yeah. Excited to do what we come out with that in, yep. in the future. And see you everybody there. Um, I also see that we have some teachers, administrators headed to April thirteenth at French Lick is the uh, annual report to the region on the eleven county region for education, workforce development, and yep. activities going on there in our region. So. Always some great speakers and some great sessions there. So if anybody else wants to join, we'll try to make it. It's free, free food, and uh, mm -hmm. a good time. Um, and on um, April twenty second, I know there's a community group working on a fundraiser for a um, memorial fund for Jay County. So uh, that will be on April twenty second, and that's out on Facebook for anyone that's interested in signing up or coming out for that. So. Speaking of that, what what kind of feedback did you get from the eighth grade trip to Ivy Tech? And um, we're, we're already trying to look at for next year. Mm -hmm. It was that good. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think the last half too that I attended. Good grades from the students. That's uh, that's what we're here for. Them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, same. I'm just I'm just grateful that mm -hmm. school's back up on the feet. It's <laughs> just it's so nice to see kids. I think it's great to see you here. I mean, it just I mean it's just it, it's so good to see all all the kids. You're the, you're the last of the, the highlighted kids, but it's really good to see. Cause I met you in here. <laughs> <laughs> And it's really lovely to see um, what you're doing and what other kids are doing. So thank you. Yes. I have one more thing to add. Sure. I've been here for a long time, but um, okay. I, I don't think we've had a meeting since we. I did have to kiss a skunk, by the way. That's um, true. And we raised a lot of money for the playground. Um, and uh, Mandy Voskirk has been doing a lot <coughs> of the so behind the scenes work as well, looking for grants and things. Um, she is. I, I can't keep up with her. She makes me so tired. Mm -hmm. But uh, that she is like the Energizer Bunny, and I can't thank her enough for that. Uh, but we have um, actually a couple. After we spoke earlier today, uh, um, since then we have a couple of I don't know. I guess vendors, playground mm -hmm. vendors that are going to come and, and visit and and take a look and um, create kind of a long term plan, you know, over the next three, four years to really kind of beef up, improve our, our playground and kind of take their recommendations and get uh, bids for that and mm -hmm. um, kind of see what we can do to improve. Just to piggyback on that too, just so the board knows, um, all the money they've raised, I, the corporation's going to cover the cost of the, so we got, we got the one slide put in, right? And then shortly after that, a, a crack formed on the other one. That, so we have to replace that one too. We looked into can it would just be fixed and it really can't. So the corporation is going to cover the cost of that slide. We already have a PO to the vendor. Um, hopefully that's going to be coming in Last soon. Yeah. Should, <laughs> he, he has told me that number one, it's, it's cheaper. Like I don't know how it's cheaper with inflation, but it's a little bit cheaper this, this go around. I think we saved about 500 bucks this time on the slide. And he said the, uh, the timeline is much better on shipping. So. Uh, corporations covering that, which is going to allow all that money to be raised to go to new, new things. So I wanted to do that for, for them, so that they didn't have to buy a slide. That way, they could do some other things. So anyway, yeah, but I appreciate Mandy hitting that up too. Absolutely, and we appreciate the slide, and mm -hmm. we did far more than 
we expected. All right, I don't have anything other than just, as always, thanks to our staff. Mm -hmm. You all are what make this place possible. So, um, okay, it's recommended that the meeting be adjourned at. Oh, one more second. Can I say yeah. I did think of something. Mm -hmm. um, the PTO is having an Easter egg community Easter egg hunt on April 1st here. Um, we're meeting in the middle school and weather dependent because a lot of things could happen between now and then. Um, then we'll move out into the grassy area. What time? It starts, the bunny arrives at 10, and you can take Easter bunny photos, and then the hunt begins at 10.30. Bunny, 10, hunt, 10.30. <laughs> Talk to me afterwards, I might have something fun for that. Okay, I will. Okay. <laughs> Talk to me, another top secret fun thing. Um, okay. It is recommended that um, the meeting be adjourned at 8.30 p.m. Do I have a motion? Yes. yes. No. <laughs> Second, Kim. All those four. Five, zero, zero. We are adjourned.